Hello my lovelies, Granny Pam here. On this gorgeous sunny day, we've had a few wonderful sunny days, it's really beginning to feel like spring. We're still in the Gospel of John, we've now reached chapter 11, and it's going to be Jesus encounters cruel events in Jerusalem. So it's chapter 11, starting at verse 1. So as always, I'm going to read the scriptures from the Living Bible, um, which is a paraphrase, and so it's put in the modern vernacular. If you want an accurate um, translation, go to the New King James uh, authorized and um, uh, or the NIV um, and um, anyway, that'll do for now. <laughs> so starting at verse 1, chapter 11. Do you remember Mary who poured out the costly perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair? Well, her brother Lazarus, who lived in Bethany with Mary and her sister Martha, was very sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Sir, your good friend is very, very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, The purpose of this illness is not death, but for the glory, or you could say, for the honour of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this situation. And although Jesus was very fond of Martha, Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days and made no move to go to them. Finally, after two days, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea. But his disciples objected. Master, they said, only a few days ago, the Jewish leaders in Judea were trying to kill you. Um, are you going to go there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day and during every hour of it, a man can walk safely and not stumble. Only at night is there danger of a wrong step because of the dark. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has gone to sleep. Now I will go and waken him. The disciples thinking Jesus meant Lazarus was having a good night's rest said, that means he's getting better. But Jesus meant Lazarus had died, and he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I wasn't there, for this will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Come, let's go to him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with him. So that's verse 16, and so now we're going to do the explanation. The village of Bethany was located about two miles east of Jerusalem on the road to Jericho. As their brother's brother grew sick, Mary and Martha turned to Jesus for help, which is always the first good thing to do. They believed in his ability to help because they had seen his many, many miracles. And we know of his miracles too, both from the Holy Scriptures and from through many lives that have been changed and experienced miracles even in 2019, because God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we need extraordinary help, Jesus, yes, Jesus offers extraordinary resources, for he offers the resources of heaven itself and of himself who is the source of life and his Father God, the great I am. So, he has great, extraordinary, limitless resources. So we shouldn't hesitate to ask him for help. Often though, in times of trouble, especially if we feel slightly guilty or you know our conscience isn't clear, we'll run away from God instead of to God. And that's a mistake. Can't tell you strong you love. Mistake, alarm. Never run from God. Uh, always run to God, especially in times of trouble, because then he can help you get over it and help you through it. He won't necessarily take it away or change it because in times of trouble, our faith grows, our um, spiritual muscles grow, and we learn so much more about how God is so well able to help us in the situation. Then we have stories to help other people, tell them, look, this is what you do. This is how you can get through this situation. I was in this situation and God helped me with this and God provided that. So we brag on him and brag on Jesus. 
Any difficult situation a believer faces can ultimately bring glory to God and that's the outcome that we want. When he has helped us, when he's done something, we give glory to God. It's so that he can be praised, he can be elevated, his name is lifted high. And so um, that's what we want out of all these things, um, is to give glory to God. Because God can bring good out of a bad situation. When your puzzle in your life, your pieces are all broken or your family's all broken, here's the one that can put the pieces back together, uh, uh, better even than it was before. And if your heart is broken, here's the one that can mend your heart and, um, and he will just make things better than they were before. Uh, because he's like that, that's what he does. When trouble comes though, do you whine, do you complain, do you blame God? That's what happens a lot, isn't it? When there's uh, um, earthquakes and famines and, and all of a sudden people who never think about God suddenly, oh, why has God done this, God done that? Well, um, if you'd have probably obeyed him and come out of sin, then the earth would not be spewing you out of it, all the sins out of it at the moment with all the earthquakes and famines that the earth which was made by a holy God therefore everything in it is pure and God said himself it was good is affected by how we live our lives that the awful evil and the sin and the Bible actually says it will spew us out of its mouth and I think that truly honestly I believe that is what's happening in this day and age we are so perverted so perverse so filled with lies and deceit so full of ourselves we love ourselves more than anything else look at the epic advance of the selfie oh my gosh look at me look at me am i cute am i beautiful am i doing something sweet am i am i am i, am I? but that's not satisfying in the long run it's only very shallow and god when we turn to god will give us deep meaning fulfilling me and actually being selfless and helping others and serving others and loving others and caring for others is a wonderful way to live and when you're depressed and you feel sorry for yourself get up and go help someone else share a kind word share a cup of coffee um, go for a walk with someone encourage someone else it will really help you it really isn't the answer to elevate yourself um, uh, it's the answer to love others as you yourselves would be loved. Do unto your neighbor as you would have done to you. And so uh, stop complaining. Just get out there and love and honor and God will be glorified and honored in you. Jesus loved his fam this family of Mary, Martha and Lazarus and often stayed with them when he was in the area. <clears throat> he knew their pain but did not respond immediately because for him he knew the end outcome and which by the way he does know the end from the beginning his delay had a specific purpose God's timing even and especially the delays may make us think he's not answering or answering the way we want but he will meet all our needs according to his perfect schedule and purpose to be good for us and to bring glory to God. So patiently await his timing. In prayer, um, sometimes the answer is no, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's yes but wait, sometimes it's not now or later, and sometimes it's just no, I'm sorry, that's just not good for you or that's gonna harm you or that's gonna hurt you or there's gonna be massive repercussions that you don't know about yet, so let's not do that. And uh, it won't, he won't say that, perhaps it's clear to you, although he might, and he certainly could, um, but sometimes we feel that when God hasn't immediately given us what we want, uh, that he's not hearing us. He always hears. He always hears. And uh, there is always an answer. It just isn't always what we want or when we want. And daylight here that he refers to, um, he says that it will not always be, um, there are only 12 hours of daylight every day and during it, a man can walk safely and stumble, but a night is the danger of the wrong step in the dark. This is referring actually to the absence of knowledge. Uh, daylight means the knowledge of God's will when we can know God's will. There's only going to be a period of time where man will strive, God will strive with man for salvation and to enlighten us and to give us the knowledge of his will and, and why the earth is here and why we're here and the answers to our questions. And it, there will come an end. Night is coming. The Bible clearly says that. And here Jesus is clearly saying that. And during the nightness, uh, it will be the absence of the knowledge of God. 
people will live how they want and oh my gosh if you see how people are living now can you imagine when all restraints are taken off it's going to be hell on earth you don't want to be in that you don't want to be part of that you want to have the knowledge of the glory of God <laughs> you want to be on his side believe me because he wins in the end who wants to be on the losing side huh so when we move ahead and choose darkness we're going to stumble we're going to fall the devil is going to rejoice and uh, he will kill destroy and rob every good thing from us and uh, he will deceive us initially sometimes he will come in and make things seem good and, and uh, so that we want to be doing those things but there's always a backlash and the backlash is horrible believe you me so going back to lazarus if jesus had been with lazarus during the final moments of his sickness he could have healed him rather than let him die but he knew jesus knew <clears throat> that he was a great example to show yet again another example of his power over death of life over death to demonstrate to his disciples and the others that were around the, about the family that he literally conquers life and death he holds the keys to life and death and sometimes we do have to experience hurt so that God can reveal power over that hurt. It's a lesson learned, I think I said in the previous one. Uh, God, what do we need from God in that situation? Instead of saying, why me and whining and complaining and feeling sorry for yourself, you might need to say, what can I learn in this situation? What does God want me to learn? Or what does God need to be for me in this situation? Do I need to find him as my saviour? Do I need to find him as my provider? Do I need to provide, uh, learn more about him as my healer or whatever it is? Uh, my restorer, my regenerator, my reviver. <laughs> oh, it's just layer upon layer upon layer, folks. The disciples knew the dangers of going out with Jesus to Jerusalem because they'd recently just experienced it. And they tried to talk him out of it. But when their objections failed, they decided they were willing to go even though it killed them and at the end of revelations it says uh, revelation 12 11 we love not our lives even unto death that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and we love not our lives even unto death so this is to the death folks and then when you die you will have eternal life you know you, through the resurrection of power of christ but the key is to get the passport first while he's still alive on earth <laughs> so they were loyal and often serving god has many dangers and can cost us our lives there are many more martyrs now alive for christ in this 20 thousand something or other statistically than any other period of time are more christians being killed so it could cost you your life but the Bible says if we lose our life, we will gain our life. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I pray, should it ever come to me, should it ever come to any of us, that we would not give up at the last moment when our heads are about to be cut off our shoulders or whatever is coming, that we will remain strong and firm because eternity is a long time. And I pray that God will give us an experience of grace like the martyr Stephen had where his face shone like an angel. And I pray for all of you in the end. Sorry about that. In the end. Um, in the end. Um, in the end uh, we will have eternal life. And it's not about us. It's about him. So, God bless you all, my darlings. I pray that you and your families may be saved. I pray that your sins will be forgiven, that you will ask for that, because then when you ask, I know they will be, because he's loving and gracious. When we confess our sin, the Bible promises he is just and faithful and does forgive us our sins. I pray that you will remain faithful in these last difficult days. It says that the love of many will grow cold. I pray that you will not be one of them. I pray that you will be uh, passionate and on fire, zealous for the Lord, because there is no one like him. I pray that your family will be faithful through the generations, however long we've got till he comes back, because he is coming back. And he is coming back soon, folks. I don't quite know in terms of our years what that means, but 
I have heard in my spirit and I've heard audibly and the word says he is coming back soon. So we have to be ready because we don't know what hour he will come back. So get ready. Prepare yourselves, prepare the family, prepare the way, prepare the world for the soon coming king. He's coming back to rule and reign. God bless you. Speak to you soon. And Granny Pam.